you today. I hope to impress on you on how much effort goes into painting a miniature. So I'm going to talk about how to paint miniatures. And uh, these are some of the miniatures I painted first. This one is one I painted when I was very young. This is one I painted just a few years ago. Now I know these are really hard to see, so I was smart. And I did make a couple of blow-ups here. <coughs> So I can see a little better. So that's the first one. This one, sorry, the camera didn't break it. Uh, so the first step I'm going to go through um, <clears throat> is uh, some of the different tools that you need to paint. Uh, of course, you need brushes, but most everybody's seen uh, watercolor brushes, which are pretty big, pretty easy. Now, what I use is what's called a 20 out brush. It's typically about 10 to 15 fibers in the brush <coughs> head. And so it's very easy to do very small details. <coughs> and then you have other tools you need. Um, uh, and some of the other tools you need are uh, the magnifying glasses to see some of those details. I actually wear a pair of these that uh, magnify up to 30 times what you're looking at. And of course, other people have used reading glasses and other stuff. Put them all together, we've got pin vices, because you're working with pewter. Pewter does not stick together very well, even in super glue. Uh, you, you touch it wrong, arm falls off, uh, or something. So this is a pin vise, very small. Everybody's seen a drill pit. Pin vise has a super small pin vise. That's actually the drill that I use to pin the models together. <coughs> and then, of course, you want exact knives and clippers and all that kind of stuff. Now some of the other things that you can, now you need your paints. Now some people decide to use uh, oil-based paints. Oil-based paints have, but they're difficult to take care of. You have to have a lacquer, a thinner, and so it's very hard to get the right colors. I use a water-based paint called acrylics. Easy to take care of, easy to clean up. And it's sort of different brands you have. Uh, you have Citadel, you have Armor, you have a base, uh, Strength coat, it's all, they're all water based paint. Now I use uh, Citadel because the place I get the miniatures has all those. And then you have different pigments. Some of the paints they've come out with now, they're called uh, foundation paints. And these are paints with a higher ratio of pigment to water. So it's thicker, it makes a better base coat. Okay? Now actually, now, now that takes four or five hours just to get the miniature together. You've got flashlights you've got to mold off. You can't see it very well, but there's a little line on the miniature where they have made the mold. So the first thing you got to do is take all that off or else you end up with a line on your miniature at the end. <coughs> so you've got small jeweler styles that you use that. Then the next step is a base coat. Basically it's a primer. Black is what most people use, gray or white. Now, if you're going to paint your miniature in a bright, light color, a yellow, orange, something light, then you want a light primer. If you're going to paint it in a purple, a dark brown, or something like that, then you use a black mint, black uh, base coat. Then you take your base coat, which is just basic coat you're going to have for your basic thing. And for my purple miniature, I used a purple. Now, for my other miniature that I have here, He's actually primer black, then base coated black. And then after a base coat, you've got a highlight, which is a gray, and then you've got a higher gray after that. So for just a basic color, you're looking at three different colors to get it to look nice. Then you've got all the other uh, objects that you've got a base coat. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you've got Okay, and then you've got your base coat, then you've got your highlight. And then you've got your other details. That you put your base coat on, and then you put your highlight. But most people like to do shading first. Shading gets into the recesses of the paint, of the miniature. And then that's a, usually a darker color than your base coat. So if you're base coating a yellow, you'll use a dark yellow or an orange. Then you go over that again with your base coat very light, but not over the whole thing, just the, reset, just the highlights, just the edges. Then you'll do 
the highlight uh, of a higher color, which is even lighter. And then you do what the final coat, which is actually called a dry brush. And the dry brush, what you do is you take your paint, you put it on your brush, and then you wipe most of it off. So you've got very little paint on there. And then you'll dry, just touch the edges of the miniature, and that gets the very edge of the highlight. Usually takes five or six strokes to get just a very light color on that. And then once you're done with that, then you get to work on the base. After you painted the whole model, you work on the base. In the base, you got the same basic steps again. You've got the base coat, then the highlight, and then you've got the final coat, which is actually a flock, which is a grass material type stuff. And then that makes it look like it's standing on a grass base or something. And then after you're done with that, then you've got the final step before you can actually do anything with this miniature. And that is the clear coat, which is a varnish or a spray coat, you can brush it on, spray it, or whatever. And so some of these miniatures I brought here, they took me anywhere between four to 12 hours to paint. And that's not including the putting it together, that's just actually painting. So. So at the end, I'd like to summarize and just let you know that these are pretty difficult things to do, but it's fun to do. I really enjoy it. And I hope that uh, some of you guys sometimes will try to find this and see how it's fun.